Thanks for joining us. This is the EWN Podcast Network. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Rev with Rachel, where we recreate, enlighten, and vibrate in our radiance. I am Reverend Dr. Rachel Whetstone, but just call me Rachel. This podcast is a place to learn about really feeling our emotions, mastering the mind, being aware of our energy, and tuning into our own intuition for the purpose of living in bliss, freedom, health, peace, and what I call our godly potential. And the topic today is about acceptance. So acceptance is part of our potential also. So we'll be learning more about that. And I would love to stay connected with you. So if you want updates on Rev with Rachel and living a Rev life, go to RevWithRachel.com, enter your name and email address. And you can also like Rev Life, uh, the Facebook page. Today's episode is non-judgment, the miracle of acceptance with Pragito Dove. Welcome to the show, Pragito. Hey, thank you so much, Rachel. I'm thrilled to be here. Yes, I'm, well, I'm thrilled to connect with you. And this is such an important topic for us to kind of go into our hearts and see where we're at and how can we grow. And so I'm just so excited to have you on. Well, thank you. It's my, it's my pleasure. It's my honor. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, so why don't you start by first just sharing your personal story story around how you started. I know you're a published author and you support people in their own healing and awareness journey. Why don't you start with sharing, like, how did you get to this place where you're now helping others in this way? Well, it's the story of the wounded healer, I think, like so many healers. Uh, I had a very difficult, challenging childhood, uh, had a very cruel mother. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I just had a lot of pain uh, and a, a lot of anger and a lot of fear. I was actually terrified of her. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had a sweetheart of a father, but he was not in his power. He couldn't stand up for himself, so he certainly couldn't stand up for me. So, you know, th those were the sort of, in a nutshell, the parents I had so that so what I learned to do was I just shut down. I, I sh shut down and decided to live in my head because mm -hmm. I didn't want to get hurt anymore. Um, and I just promised myself when I was a little child that as soon as I could, I wanted to be happy, you know, mm -hmm. and, not, and not getting a new bicycle happy, but yeah. really be happy inside all the time and as soon as I could uh, in my early 20s after I graduated from college uh, I, I started to seek where I could where I could heal myself mm -hmm. and long story short I found uh, an enlightened mystic called Osho I don't know if you've heard of him or not I have yeah Ah, so he, <clears throat> he was offering a very wide range of meditation techniques. Excuse my voice, I have allergies. I live here in Tucson, Arizona, <clears throat> and the allergies get to my voice sometimes. Yeah, no worries. By the time I found Osho, I was about seven years into my marriage, and I was six months pregnant, and I found out my husband was having an affair. Mm. So it was like my life just sort of fell apart, and I decided to go to India to, to study with Osho, and I took my baby son with me. He was 40 months old when I oh, took him. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I... I, I I got my son in the divorce. I got full custody of my son, thank God. Mm -hmm. um, so what I found in Osho's meditation resort in India was he taught so many different uh, types of meditation, like different meditation traditions. Mm -hmm. Plus he had created some of his own. 
So I, lear I learned a series of expressive meditation techniques. For example, a laughter meditation, my favorite. Ooh. Um, and then there's the opposite, the tears meditation. So you dress, address the sadness as well. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a gibberish meditation, which is from the Sufi tradition, which is very good for expressing and dumping out your anger, frustration, and rage. Mm -hmm. um, then there's a dancing meditation, which is also from the Sufi tradition, which is great for evoking uh, joy and expression. Mm -hmm. And then there was a series of um, humming meditations from the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, which are very powerful. And they've actually been used in oncology centers in New York. Uh, there's research to prove this. These humming meditations, which help um, dissolve cancer in the body. They're very powerful. Awesome. So... Uh, plus, I, of course, I learned the traditional sitting in silence meditation. So I, I studied meditation extensively. Also, the Zen tradition, Hote, the Laughing Buddha. Um, and I, I think I wasn't quite expecting that when I got there, but I was invited to do the meditation trainings, to train as a meditation teacher, mm -hmm. which uh, I thought, how how can I ever teach meditation? You know, because I felt like I was such a mess as a person with, with such a, with my whole life kind of in ruins around me. But mm. um, I think that Osho saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> he was right because uh, I studied, I did a lot of teacher training and it's really become something that I'm very, very good at. I just love it. And I mean, the, the healing effect on me is, was just transformational to go from uh, so, much, so much pain and anger and fear. Uh, I found my center. I found my authentic self. I found my joy and my laughter. I found my creativity mm -hmm. so that I could write books and be a teacher. I'm also a hypnotherapist. Um, and it was, it was like a miracle, you know, it mm -hmm. really was. And so of course, um, this is my business is called discover meditation training. So this is what I do. And I've been doing, I've had my business for about 18 years now. Um, I want to share this with others because mm -hmm. it works, you know? I love it. And I'm, well, I love that you say it works. And that's, that's what po is possible for us is to transform those things that, you know, are holding us back. Like you mentioned, the anger, fear, anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, and like today, we're going to talk about that shift from um, judgment to acceptance. Yes. So, and, but then on the other side of that is such a freedom, and the peace yes. and the ease in life instead of, for me, I kind of went from this perceiving life a struggle to it actually can flow with ease. <laughs> yes, exactly. Me too. Yeah. Awesome. And, and the, the hypno, hypnotherapy helped with that a lot too, because I learned in my hypnotherapy training that I could change the blueprints in my subconscious from those old beliefs of fear, lack, and scarcity change my money blueprint into abundance blueprint. Mm -hmm. So, so the two, between the two of those, the meditations and the hypnotherapy, um, they, yes, it all worked like magic. I, I mean, you have, it. you have to put the work in as you know, but it, it, yeah. it does work. Yeah, absolutely. One thing is coming to me. So it seems like often it, it's almost like, it takes something um, catastrophic or traumatic in our lives for us to um, look for something like this, to be like, oh, maybe I need some healing work or some meditation. And I'm just like, how do we, you know, spread the message so that we can tap into this before things get bad? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. Uh, 
Well, you know, for me, they were bad from the day I was born. So mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> I don't know if I could have done much about that. And in my work, I mean, I've been doing my individual sessions of coaching and hypnotherapy for about 18 years now. And my my experience with people is that often, most of the time, it does stem from childhood, you mm-hmm. know, from from the parents we got. Yeah from the lineage, which is our grandparents and great-great-grandparents and their beliefs and their behavior patterns that they pass on to us. Yeah. Um, So, you know, so the the children, I don't know, are just victims, really, of that circumstance. So I I don't know. uh, unless, Unless you can decide you know rather than wait for like a car accident or you know breaking your leg or something like that to stop you in your tracks um start start doing healing work anyway you know Mm -hmm. because because i think everybody has lessons everybody has something that they need to heal mm-hmm. some kind of wounds, uh, to, you know, to a greater or lesser extent. Yeah. Um, is it kind of like a liberating from our conditioning? Like, yes, that's exactly what it is. It is. It's. It's because the the conscious mind is is full of uh, full of all kinds of programming that was put in us when we were born. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's not even ours, really, in a way, but yet it's there. And, yeah. and we do have to do the work to, to change it, to heal it, and to tra- change it, to transform it, mm-hmm. which is very doable. And I think what you're highlighting, too, is a lot of this starts young. So our condi- what we are conditioned to, our beliefs, what are our judgments like we're going to talk about comes from maybe not even us. Like maybe it was put yes. on to us through our family, how exactly. we were raised. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about, you know, this judgment and how that, how we can shift into acceptance and what that is. Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is a topic that's dear to my heart because I think that judgment is the number one cause of suffering in the world. And I think it's also at the root of, of racism, the, the way we judge each other for not just for the color of our skin, but for any number of many, many reasons we quickly can go into judging people. So, you know, where do these judgments come from? Well, we inherit them. That, that's where they come from. Uh, they get passed down generation to generation so that as we are children and we, we, we start growing up, we hear our parents saying these things, mm-hmm. um, making judgmental comments about people who are black or Asian or divorced or sick even, you know, mm-hmm. um, and we just absorb it all. And a lot of the judgment, I think, that goes on is actually unconscious you know, people aren't even really aware how full of judgments their minds are mm-hmm. or, or, or why they hate people. I actually saw a, a video recently on, on Facebook of this white woman and she was on the back of a truck and she was shouting her head off at, at a group of black people and she was yelling at them, I hate you, I hate you, and I'm going to teach my children to hate you. Oh, my I know. And I thought, you know, she was taught that. She was raised that way. She can't possibly mean it because she doesn't even know these black people that she's (laughs) yelling at. Yeah. I'm always surprised when I hear judgment of people we don't even know or have never even met or talked to. (laughs) They were just standing there along the road, you know. And... um, And so what that brings me to is awareness. You know, we must become more aware of what is going on in our thoughts because it starts with the thoughts. And judgment lives in the mind. 
Judgment, comparison, and fear and greed live in the mind. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn to become more um, aware of the thoughts of the mind. And this is a practice uh, created by the Buddha 25 centuries ago, actually, uh, called witnessing the mind, where you just sit mm -hmm. in silence and observe the thoughts of the mind and just let them pass by. Um, so I think that's a huge thing for everyone just to become aware of those judgments in the first place. And then, of course, you have to be careful not to judge yourself for judging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go down that black hole because that doesn't help you at all. Um, mm -hmm. And you must have compassion for yourself because, you know, as I said, you, you inherit the judgments um, from, from our forebears. So we must have compassion for ourselves as we bring awareness so that we can start with, first of all, having acceptance for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Accepting that we're judging, you know, it, as the thoughts cross the mind and just let them go. We don't have to have to speak them out. We don't have to act upon them. But the awareness and the witnessing um, technique helps you to create a greater distance, have more compassion for yourself and shine the light of awareness on where all this starts in the unconsciousness of the mind, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it gets acted out on the world stage. Uh, so the opposite of judgment is acceptance. So we can do, as I've previously said, you bring in awareness of the thoughts of the mind and practicing, witnessing the mind. And the other thing we can do is acceptance is to start with accepting ourselves mm -hmm. because you can't be accepting of other people if you're not accepting of yourself so that's a very important point <laughs> yes it's it's so true that kind of if we can make that choice to start looking at where we are not accepting of ourselves that starts because I feel like the world reflects that and Absolutely. so that, I mean, and that's an uncomfortable feeling. And so we don't want to feel it in ourselves. So then we put it out there. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but, but if we can look in the mirror, so to speak, and mm -hmm. focus on ourselves, that's, and I always keep emphasizing compassion so that we don't continue the judgment on ourselves yeah. because we're not accepting enough. You know, so then you start judging and, and go around in a circle there. So the compassion for ourselves is extremely important. And, yeah, learning to accept ourselves. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, uh, I'm accepting myself. That means I'm going to be like this for the rest of my life. No. <laughs> yeah. it, it just means in this moment now, you know, because the only reality is now. Mm -hmm. The future is yet to be created. The past is finished. And so in, in this way, meditation and, and existence is very forgiving because we always have now. We can always start again now. Mm -hmm. And when we can accept ourselves, and everybody can do this right now who's listening, you know, accept yourself in this moment right now listening to this podcast uh, just accept everything in the moment because our future is created out of our present moment so if we if we are in a state of acceptance of ourselves now in this moment now then the next moment grows out of that so then we're accepting in the next moment then the next moment grows out of that so then we take the acceptance in the next moment and this is how we can create a beautiful future for ourselves by always coming from the present with acceptance, with joy, with love, 
and keep those qualities, keep taking them into those next moments, and we can create a future of acceptance and joy and love. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter to remember to, or to start in the present moment, to start in the now. Y you know, let's drop the past, it's finished. No mm -hmm. point in sort of regurgitating that. <laughs> it doesn't help anything. Right. <laughs> and have tremendous compassion and forgiveness for yourself and love for yourself and acceptance of yourself and start going forward from now. And everybody listening to this, you can do this right now. Um, mm -hmm. Start now with loving acceptance of yourself. And so then what is the miracle in it? Well, the miracle is, I mean, ultimately the miracle is love. Mm. And, and judgment is unloving. You know, to judge ourselves is... Is harsh. We don't deserve that. So when we can go into the opposite, which is acceptance, we go from self, self hatred, say, to self love, from self judgment, some self criticism, from condemning ourselves to self love. So that is actually the miracle that we can be transformed and we can be transformed in a moment if we're ready for it mm -hmm. to, because judgment creates suffering and acceptance creates love and joy. Love and joy. <laughs> yeah, it's powerful. So are there ways, I started thinking about, are there ways that maybe we cover up in ourselves that we're not accepting of ourselves? Oh, absolutely. Yes, and the one way we cover up is to judge other people. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very common and easy way to avoid looking at the real issue, which is, our non-acceptance of ourselves. So we latch on to faults of other people and it, it often tends to be faults that we actually have. Mm. So ourselves. it reflects. It, so it reflects. What we see. Okay. Yeah. So like if you feel, for example, that you're not a good mother, then you see the neighbor down the street, you'll criticize her for not being a good mother. And so the first step is to bring awareness. If you do that, because most people, let's face it, we, do, we all do that to a greater or lesser degree, is first you bring awareness, that's what you're doing, and then bring compassion for yourself and compassion for the other person. And then see if you can bring acceptance for yourself for not being the perfect mother. I've been through this one. Mm. <laughs> um, Accept yourself for being the best mother you know how to be in this moment. Because it can only ever be in this moment. Mm -hmm. And then you can accept your neighbor down the street, other mothers, for not being perfect. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty impossible task to be a perfect mother. <laughs> Tell me <about> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why you have to do the laughter meditation sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that you can, uh, yeah, just have a good laugh about everything. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the tears meditation, then you can cry about everything. And then you can sit in silence and just come to center. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, so um, you see the, the more, because even in that example with the mother down the street, if we can be more um, accepting of ourselves, and then it brings somehow a clarity and a compassion for this other mother down the street. And, you know, if you imagine if everybody... Was, had the awareness to do that, 
And it, it just needs awareness. It doesn't require money. You know, it doesn't require anything huge. It just need, It's just like a little tweak of awareness. Mm-hmm. And, and an easy way to start is notice who you criticize. You know, even if it's mm-hmm. somebody on TV, even if it's somebody famous, you know. Right. Do you, do you have a habit of, of, or complaining, you know, complaining about people or criticizing people? Mm-hmm. Because if you do, that means that's going on in your head and you're, and you're criticizing yourself. That's yeah. what that's showing you. So then you can bring the compassion to yourself and not being the perfect this or the perfect that. And then the person on the outside of you, it somehow fades away in importance. And the, the habit just kind of tends to dissolve. Mm-hmm. Because you don't need that habit of criticizing other people anymore because you're not avoiding anymore. You're, you're able to live with yourself and mm-hmm. in yourself and connected to yourself and loving and accepting yourself. And then other people out there, well, you know, they could be who they are. They can be who they are because we're kind of living in the joy and the peace and the bliss. We don't have to invest energy in in that anymore, it seems like. Exactly. It's definitely more relaxing. It's, um, it just brings more, more happiness on, on a day-to-day basis. And so, therefore, less suffering because judgment just creates suffering. That's what it creates. And describe what, the, what you mean by suffering then. Well, not feeling good or feeling bad. Because guilt is judgment. Guilt is self-judgment. So, for example, you might decide, um, instead of cleaning out the kitchen on Saturday morning, you're going to go out on a nature trail and go for a nice walk, which is a perfectly reasonable choice. Mm -hmm. But... Supposing you're out on your in the your beautiful nature walk, and and your mind is just constantly giving you a hard time because you're not back in the kitchen cleaning out the kitchen cupboards. Mm-hmm. You know, so then you ruin your walk because yeah. because you're not present with the nature and the birds and the trees and the flowers on your walk. You're creating suffering for yourself by not enjoying the walk because you keep giving yourself a hard time in your mind that you should be cleaning the kitchen. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. (laughs) I used to um, really operate from shoulds. Yeah. It led to feeling very overwhelmed. And I guess now I'm probably seeing how it, um, as you're describing this, I was probably operating a lot from guilt. Like I should be, Yes, working on something serious when I wasn't, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, this was really profound for me in grad school or um, it was a big part of my life where I always felt like I should be working or doing more or uh, think like things then just felt overwhelming and, you know, yes, it's it's, sort of that's not like a peaceful ease present. <laughs> <way to live. laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the two words to to help you recognize if you're in a judgmental frame of mind are should and ought. Oh, yeah. Those two words are like red flags for judgment. And Mm -hmm. then if you you want to go this route, you can start looking at, okay, where did I learn that? You know, that I should be working hard all the time you know, Mm -hmm. or should be working out more or should be, should be this and should be that, then you probably inherited that because no child does that to themselves, Mm -hmm. you know, naturally. So you probably inherited from both or one of your parents or your caregivers. And 
So that is a learned behavior which can be unlearned. Mm-hmm. Like with which, awareness, right? <laughs> with awareness, yeah. So for that, depending at what people want to do, I can offer them hypnotherapy sessions to change these old beliefs and these old blueprints that were imprinted into us as children, mm-hmm. which, which maybe don't serve us anymore. Because, you know, some people, for example, they have grandparents, great, great grandparents, for example, who were in the Second World War in Europe, where there was so much hardship. Yeah. Or, or maybe they were in the Great Depression here in the United States in the 30s. And that, you know, those beliefs get passed on that there isn't enough, there isn't enough money, there isn't enough love, there isn't enough of everything. So that's the fear, lack, and scarcity mindset Mm -hmm. that is, I I had that. I had that put into me very strongly, particularly by my mother. Um, She was always afraid we were going to run out of money and there wasn't enough of things, you know. Mm -hmm. Although, in fact, there was because my father had a regular job. And so it actually wasn't true, but her fears, but she believed them so strongly and she passed them on to me, Mm. you know? So then I had to do a lot of work with the meditations and with the hypnotherapy to deprogram myself, like de-hypnotize myself, if Mm. you like. Yeah. Um, That, that is actually not true because the truth is we are abundant beings living in an abundant universe. That is the truth of who we are. And we were all divine beings of love and light. Um, But unfortunately, the conditioning in us has been so strong that people have lost their connection with their their spirit or their soul and with their heart, with their inner wisdom, with their intuition, the the parts of themselves that knows this. Mm -hmm. And yet I find when I say it, there is a resonance in people because everybody has a soul, a heart, you know, inner wisdom that that knows that this is the truth. And the good news is we can um, unprogram ourselves uh, or deprogram ourselves, whichever is the right word, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and be free from that because I have done that. I have done that. That's where I am, where I am in my life right now. And there's nothing I like better than sharing all this with people in my work Mm -hmm. to help them get freed up from all those patterns, from all those, their lies, really, that that, these untruths that we've been programmed with. Mm -hmm. that there isn't enough of everything because there is, because see what gets released in us is our creativity and what makes money creativity makes money. And Mm -hmm. I think we're really seeing this now with this pandemic where some people's lives, I mean, I've been lucky. My life has not been turned upside down, but I know a lot of people have and you need your creativity you know, because maybe you have to pivot your business Mm -hmm. or find different skills, you know, that you never knew you had or start writing that book that you've never started. Or Mm -hmm. um, I've seen, you know, some amazing things happen even in the few months that we've so far been in this pandemic of people getting in touch with their creativity and stepping into it and yeah. doing, doing things they never thought they would have time to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love so, that. And that's and that what you're saying too, it's in all of us. Like we all have yeah, that, that creative um, potential within us. It's not like, oh, they, they're so good. They can do that, but uh, I could never do something. But it, it may not look like someone else's, but it's there's oh, something right. in all of us absolutely there is and it won't look like somebody else's I mean even if you write a book it won't it'll be totally a unique book it won't be like anybody else's right everybody absolutely has a unique creativity 
just like flowers in nature. Because mm. even if, for example, you look at a whole bed of roses, but you start looking at them, not one is the same as the next one. They're mm. all different, you know? Oh, I love and, that. Yeah, we're all the same. We're all flowers in the garden of existence. And so we liberate ourselves too by not comparing ourselves to exactly. others. Yes, because that's a loser's game. And yeah. that, that, <laughs> that creates suffering too, because yeah. there's always somewhere, someone we're better than, and there's always someone that we find that we're less than. And this is where you have to watch the mind because comparison lives in the mind. So again, witnessing the mind, watching those thoughts and staying with self-acceptance of who you are right now mm -hmm. and where you're at on your journey right now because it's perfect. It's always perfect where you are right now. You know, you're not supposed to be where somebody else is or forward of you or back of you as you perceive it or as you judge it, mm -hmm. but there's a perfection for each one of us to where we are in our journey in this moment. Oh, I love that. Yes. I mean, you're bringing, uh, you know, so many good concepts and awarenesses that really when we know the things that you're talking about, it transforms our lives and how we can show up and be free. I love it. It, it, yep, it totally transforms us because you have a totally different perspective, a different viewpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like at the bottom of the mountain, you can see so much, but you start climbing the mountain, get look what you can see from the top of the mountain, you know? Yeah. So much more. And so on your healing journey, this is what happens. You just start to see more and all you're in a potential I mean you know I've been on my healing journey a long time over 20 years and yet I'm still finding amazing um, aspects of my creativity I didn't know I had it's mm. it's really fun yeah and, and that's the same for everybody and that's what makes it fun the journey I think yeah so it's Everybody's full of infinite possibility, mm -hmm. every single person. And the only thing in the way is you not believing that. Right. That's the only thing in the way. But all you have to do is get started, get started with somebody, with a coach, with somebody, and allow them to help you you know, heal what needs to be healed and start stepping into your greatest creative expression because that's why we're all here to, to express the beauty of who we are so others can enjoy what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Pragito. I have just loved every moment of this. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. So if the listeners want to connect with you to learn more and how you can support them or get one of your books, how would you like them to do that? Well, my website is discovermeditation.com. And you go there. I have a free newsletter, The Laughing Buddha's Network. Uh, so you can join my newsletter for free and find out everything that's going on. I also have a Facebook group, the Pragito Dove Laughing Buddhas Facebook group. Awesome. Well, welcome to join that. We have a lot of fun in there and there's also a lot of healing happens and um, all about bringing people to greater abundance on every level. Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you again. This has been such a pleasure. Well, you're very, very welcome. It's been a tremendous pleasure for me to have met you, Rachel, and to that you've given me the, this opportunity. So I'm very, very appreciative. Yes, you're well, you're welcome. Thanks again. 
Hey, Rev with Rachel listeners. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's a pleasure to share these important life transforming and healing topics with you. As always, remember to rev, recreate, enlighten, and vibrate. Thank you for listening. Until we meet again, be love. EWN Podcast Network.